James, you spoke at length this morning about the new OpenMP standard uh, 4.0 and some of the advantages that that brings to developers looking at parallelism. Could you talk a little bit about the standard and when we can expect to see that ratified? So yeah, OpenMP 4.0, I, I think uh, the way I like to think of it is OpenMP has been at the forefront of standardizing uh, techniques uh, for adding uh, directives um, to take advantage of parallelism. So to take advantage of more and more cores, for instance. And OpenMP has served that role for some time and it continues to refine that. So OpenMP 4.0 has refinements to that as we have come to expect. But it has two major new additions to ways to take advantage of other types of parallelism. Uh, there's a capability that we call uh, SIMD uh, directives or pragmas uh, and that gives the opportunity to take advantage of vectorization better. And this is a bold new um, effort by OpenMP uh, to uh, standardize a way of getting uh, us to be more confident that a particular loop will be vectorized. And this is based on work uh, from Intel uh, with contributions from others, but we've, we've had a capability like this in our compiler for a number of years and it's really proven to be quite effective with users. So, uh, so the Pragma OpenMP SIMD directives are very powerful additions to OpenMP 4.0 that gives it some capabilities for vectorization, which is new. And then the, finally, the other area is uh, the concept of offloading uh, code and data to an attached uh, processor, if you will. So this means support for what a lot of people have called offload. Uh, OpenMP calls it target. So they, the idea being that there may be an extra device in the system that you target to do some of the computational work for you. So in the particular cases, this, this includes GPUs and Intel Xeon Phi and probably more devices we'll invent in the future. It could be applied to FPGAs and things like that. So uh, I, I'm really excited about that. So it extends OpenMP from just parallelism to vectorization and to offload devices, uh, all in OpenMP 4.0. That's great. And you also spoke a little bit about some of the unique challenges of vectorization and some of the distinct advantages brought to bear uh, when trying to build vectors uh, with some of the new Intel developer tools. Could you talk a little bit about that for the Go Parallel audience? Yeah, so, you know, we've, we've invested a lot in our tools to help with vectorization and, I, I, and we're going to continue to do that. It's, it's a capability that in hardware that's really emerged in recent years to be very significant. Uh, if you take a look at something like SSE that's been around for a long time, you you could get a theoretically up to a 2x speed up for double precision because you could do two doubles at a time, maybe four uh, uh, single precision. Uh, but with the advent of AVX, which doubles that, uh, you can get up to 4x uh, double precision or 8x single. Uh, Intel Xeon Phi takes it another 2x and we can handle up to eight double precision and, and 16 uh, single. And the point of this is that the vector is getting wider and wider like that, makes vectorization more important to take advantage of. Uh, unfortunately, our programming languages get in the way of that uh, in a variety of different ways. And the traditional approaches to that has been to try to overcome those limitations by adding more and more annotations to comfort the compiler and, and give it the information it needs to vectorize. Uh, but those have proven very unsatisfactory. Uh, they're not as portable as we'd like them to be. They're not as predictable. So these new new generation of capabilities, such as the uh, SIMD pragmas that uh, Intel pioneered and are going into OpenMP 4.0, uh, breathe new life into this. And so not only do we have those directives, but then we have associated capabilities in our tools to help get feedback from tools like VTune, uh, and of course our math libraries take advantage of these techniques and so we have more and more ways to help the developer get their code to vectorize but not only get it to vectorize but get it to stay vectorizing so that once you've made the changes to your code that you have some confidence that uh, it'll keep keep vectorizing even when new versions of Intel compilers come out or if you move to other compilers that will support the OpenMP 4.0 uh, these should prove much more portable than vectorization has in the past. 
That's great. And then one final question for you. You spoke a bit about the unique advantages posed by Xeon Phi over uh, a GPU architecture. Could you talk a little bit about that and, and the ways in which you know, Xeon Phi is better architected for parallelism? Yeah, I, I think it, it starts with a fundamental belief that we should be able to support the same programming languages and same programming models. And to do that, we built a very general purpose device. Um, this is as opposed to thinking that if you made a more specific device, uh, made the hardware simpler, that you could get such performance advantages that it would be worth recoding everything. Uh, we took a different approach, which is we put a lot of energy into trying to get the same performance capabilities as uh, uh, other um, uh, similar you know, approaches for accelerating, but to do it in a way that's uh, highly programmable. And so this, this created a, uh, a different approach we call a coprocessor approach, where we have a highly parallel device, the Intel Xeon Phi, but it's built out of x86 cores, and it runs the standard operating system, runs Linux, and it'll, it'll support the same programming uh, models, the same programming languages. Uh, so it's much easier to take existing code, get it running on it, uh, and then there's a, a tuning effort if you want to take advantage of higher levels of parallelism than you have ever had before. Uh, but it's really limited to that tuning, that parallelization work, not to recoding in a different language. Or uh, worse yet, uh, uh, you, you're, we haven't added limitations, so you should be able to get the same type of code working. Uh, and that, maybe that's the biggest distinction with the GPU. Uh, GPUs by design have been designed for a more specific task, and so uh, you cannot run all the codes there are out there. And if you were to generalize a GPU so that it could, it would really just become a CPU, which is more um, the sort of thing that we've designed Intel Xeon Phi to be. It's, it's really just an SMP or a, a CPU with uh, a very large number of cores, and that has a lot of benefits to um, adopting legacy code um, and making it run in parallel. All right. Thank you very much, James. This is uh, Stephen Wellen with Go Parallel. We're here at Intel Software. We'll be coming up with more shortly. Thank you.